Hello family, we thank the Lord for another day. Today I want to share with you that leaders are supposed to uphold holiness. And I'm reading Exodus chapter 32, reading from verse 20 to verse 25. Then Moses took the calf they had made and burned it in the fire and ground it to powder and scattered it on the surface of the water and made the Israelites drink it. Then Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you, that you have brought so great a sin on them? Aaron said, Do not let the anger of my Lord burn. You know the people yourself, that they are prone to evil. For they said to me, Make us a God who will go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. I said to them, let whoever has gold, jewelry, take it off. So they gave it to me. Then I threw it into the fire and out came this calf. Now when Moses saw that the people were out of control, for Aaron had let them get out of control to the point of being an object of mockery among their enemies. Aaron had blamed the people for putting him in a position of making them the golden calf. I shared a few days ago, and for anyone who's been following this podcast, we know that he was Moses' right-hand man. He had been witness to what God had done for the people of Israel, not only the things he had done openly, but he had also been witness of what God had spoken to Moses in the secret place. And he himself had had occasions to hear from Jehovah, Almighty God. Yet, when the people came to Aaron, asking to have another God to go before them, Aaron did not put up a stand against what they were asking him to do. He was the one who even said to them, bring me your jewelry. There was no indication that he had made any attempt whatsoever to discourage the people from making him create an idol for them. He could have actually tried to persuade them to wait a little longer, but he failed to do so. And what I think is also interesting in this passage that I've read is that when he says to Moses that the people had basically put pressure on him and so on, he says in verse 24 that I said to them, let whoever has gold jewelry take it off. So they gave it to me. Then I threw it into the fire and out came this calf. I see the calf was formed mysteriously by itself, which obviously we know from a previous passage that it was not true. For the Bible tells us that when they gave him the jewelries, he forged the calf. So he played an active role. Meanwhile, when Moses had gone up to the mountain, he was supposed to be in charge. And the Bible says that when Moses came down, he saw that the people had gone out of control. I want to quickly read a passage of scripture in Titus chapter 1, reading from verse 6. In fact, I'll read from verse 5 rather, from verse 5 to verse 9. This is what it says. For this reason, I left you behind in Crete so that you would set right what remains unfinished and appoint elders in every city as I directed you, namely a man of unquestionable integrity, the husband of one wife, having children who believe, not accused of being immoral or rebellious, for the overseer as God's steward must be blameless, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not addicted to wine not violent, not greedy for dishonest gain by financially ethical. And he must be hospitable to believers as well as strangers, a lover of what is good, sensible, upright, fair, 
devout, self-disciplined, above reproach, whether in public or in private, he must hold firmly to the trustworthy word of God as it was taught to him so that he will be able both to give accurate instruction in sound, reliable, error-free doctrine and to refute those who contradict it by explaining their error. This passage of scripture gives us an indication as to what Aaron should have done. He should have immediately spoken out against the fact that they were asking for an idol to be made so that they would worship this idol. He would have known that by doing so they would incur the wrath of God. He was supposed to speak up. He was supposed to let his stance be known. But I guess what happened was he would allow the fear of the people. Fear of whether whatever it was he thought they would do to him to not stand up for what he knew deep down inside of him was the right thing to do. And so today as I share this, it is not to put blame or whatever because it is God who obviously we know that God shows him mercy because he still uses him as priests regardless. But it's the lesson here is that we are to be a people, not only when we find ourselves in a leadership role, but we're to be people who do not and are not willing to compromise the fundamental truths of scripture which we live by. We're not to compromise the fact that we have a living God, a sovereign God, the maker of heaven and earth, the one in whom we live and move and have our being. We're supposed to resolve that we will not be ashamed of the truth of what we know. So that even in times when people may be trying to persuade us to do that which we know is against Almighty God, we'll be able to make our stance clear that we're not a people who will compromise, not even because we want to be in favor with human beings who, by the way, they themselves have need of a savior, human beings who cannot save us anyway. And if Aaron had done that, maybe the story would have become totally different. Maybe the people would have still gone on and created themselves an idol, but at least he would have been blameless. Moses would not have had this discourse with him because Moses knew that he was the one who had actually failed to take charge of the people. And so Moses says to him, look at what you've done. You've actually allowed and brought sin about because of what these people have allowed you to do. And so as I think about this, you know, let us all be a people who are not afraid of being in, out of favor with other people. Because sometimes even people are discouraged from walking in the path of holiness and righteousness because of pressure. Pressure that sometimes comes from friends. Sometimes that pressure comes from, from colleagues. Sometimes it comes from family members, you know, and you they might persuade you to do something. And it won't seem to be in favor with them. If you're not careful, you will displease the Lord. And though the Lord God Almighty is merciful, there are certain sins and certain failures, as we like to use the word failures, that sometimes comes with dire consequences. And as we read on, we will begin to, we will see that indeed there came some dire consequences for those people who were determined that regardless of the fact that Moses had arrived, that they were still going to have their own way. And so if you're a leader, I also ask that you would pray daily and ask God to really help you to be able to stand strong in your faith, in your conviction. If you're somebody who is so strong in your conviction, then people cannot dissuade you. Because especially in this world that we're living now, there are people who are even preaching doctrine that is so far-fetched, it's not even biblical. And they've stamped their own approval on it and are preaching it as though it's the gospel. And there are some people who are even falling for the, the false doctrine that is being paraded as truth. And the Bible says that a leader or a person who is an elder should be one who is able 
to rightly see what is not of God and to be able to stay with what is of God. But we can only do that if we continue in prayer, if we continue to walk in humility before God, if we continue to ask God to lead us and to guide us, because it is only the Spirit of God who can help us to overcome the deception and not to fall for the deception that is even being paraded sometimes as though it was gospel. We're now going to go over our memory verse. Psalm 100 verse 2. Serve the Lord with gladness and delight. Come before his presence with joyful singing. We're personalizing it now by saying, I serve the Lord with gladness and delight. I come before his presence with joyful singing. The Lord bless you and I look forward to sharing with you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.